שלום רואיכם, שלום, סלאם, אז, פיס, נמאסטה. אני רבי ארתור וואסקו, אני הדירקטור של השלום סנטר, ואני אהיה האוטור של כמה מהבוקים המאוד רציניים, דנסינג עם גאד ארתקוויק, the coming transformation of religion. And we're uh, beginning this week's Torah portion, which is called Toldot, or Begettings in English, uh, with the chapter of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 19, with the begetting of twins to Uh, Rebecca or Rivka, Isaac's wife. Uh, says Torah, I'm using uh, Everett Fox's translation, which in my view is the very best translation into English of the five books of Moses, that's what it's called, uh, published by Shocking Books. Uh, the children in this beginning, the children almost crushed one another inside Rivka, Rebecca. So she said, if this be so, for what is this I? And she went to inquire of Yudhe Vovhe, yeah. the breath of life, the interbreathing spirit of the world. Yeah, Yudhe Vavhe said to her, two nations are within your body, two tribes from your belly shall be divided. Tribe shall be mightier than tribe Elder shall be servant to younger. So that's not the way it worked out. The younger became servant to the, oh no, the younger became the, uh, Mm, not quite master, but leader of the elder. So Esau, the elder, was beloved of his father, Isaac. I think because uh, like his, uh, like, Isaac's older half-brother, uh, Ishmael, he was an athletic archer, a hunter. Ishmael had been stolen away from Isaac, that's what it felt like anyway, to Isaac, and sent out into the wilderness. And I think he hungered for that uh, older athletic guy who he had grown up with. And Rivka, the mother of the two of them, loved Jacob more because she had heard the voice, the voice of the breath of life, proclaimed that the younger of the twins would be victorious over the elder. And this is the third time that we had heard God favoring the younger son. God favored Abel over Cain, Isaac over Ishmael, Jacob over Esau. And it wasn't, didn't end there. Uh, Joseph and Benjamin were favored over their elder half brothers. And Ephraim was favored over Menasha. They're all reversals 
of the official legal framework in which the older brother is supposed to inherit more property and more blessing. The first of these uh, pairs of conflict ends in murder when the elder refuses to back off and Cain, the killer, suffers not uh, death, but a kind of continuing trauma of the oppressor. The mark, the mark of Cain, that makes him alien wherever he travels. All the rest of these conflicts end in a kind of reconciliation between the two brothers or the many brothers. And the reconciliation comes when the elder brother or brothers accept the leadership of the younger ones, even though it seems to be against the rule of law. The repetitions in Genesis of all these uh, brother relationships presage uh, the moment in Exodus, the book of Exodus, when God proclaims the people Israel, God's own firstborn, even though clearly Egypt is older, stronger, richer, and yet this disempowered people seems to become the firstborn favored by God. It wins his freedom against imperial Egypt. And the Bible even celebrates the day when in the long run, Egypt too will win its freedom and be reconciled with the firstborn, so-called firstborn. And even imperial Nineveh will be reconciled with small, young Israel. To me, this seems like uh, an early set of mythic pointers who are a rough kind of social justice. What does it mean for us today in the relations between the seemingly powerful and the disempowered between Euros and indigenous peoples, between Anglos and Latinx peoples, between whites and blacks, between men and women, between humanity and earth. Would the stories suggest perhaps that this is a time, precisely the time when in these pairs, it is time not for the kind of self-destruction of the powerful or for the humiliation of, for example, Cain, but for humility, not humiliation, for the acceptance of truth and reconciliation between the powerful and the disempowered. Is this a time when we need that? And are the stories of the Bible of these brothers pointing us toward this time when it is necessary for us to achieve a reconciliation. Shalom to all of you. And I hope you'll think about what this rereading of the Torah might be.
peace thing in our own day. So long. Until next week, and we'll study quickly some Torah.